Two minutes to go, you guys. Before we, I know we're going live. Um, St it's Steve at the Golden Air. Is it Gardena? Is that how it's pronounced? Great, thank you. Yeah. Okay, we are live on YouTube. Thank you. Welcome to the City of Nevada City's regular meeting of the Nevada City Council, Wednesday, April 14th, 2021. At 6 p.m., we are gathering for a closed session. At this point, if there's anybody in the audience who would like to make a comment, now is the time to do it. We have no attendees. Okay, at this time, I'm going to ask all council members to move to, oh, I'm sorry, I messed up. I need to do a roll call. Council member Peterson? Here. Council member Fernandez? Here. And council member Fleming? Here. Vice Mayor Estraza? Here. And Mayor Manette? Here. Thank you. Okay, now I'm going to ask us all to move to the closed session. Thank you.
Okay, are we all here? Okay, Danielle, you ready? Okay. Welcome back to the Nevada City Council meeting. Um, we're coming back from our closed session on April 14th. And I am going to call for a roll. Do I call for another roll call, Joan? Uh, yes, you can do that. Okay. So I'm calling this mean meeting to order. Um, this city council meeting convenes on the ancestral territories of the Nevada City Rancheria Nisenan Tribe. If you will all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America, to the republic for which, for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, indivisible with, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you. And roll call, please. Mayor Manette. Here. Vice Mayor Strasser. Here. Councilmember Fernandez. Here. Councilmember Fleming. Here. Councilmember Peterson. Here. And I just looked out my window and it's rainy. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Count every drop. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All my stuff's out there. Um, at this time, this is the adoption of the agenda. Um, is there any items that anybody from council would like to pull or any items for discussion? No. Okay. Um, staff? No, Madam Mayor, there are no changes from staff. Okay, great. Um, if I could get a motion on the adoption of this agenda. No moved. Second? I second that. Daniela, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Okay, thank you. Um, announcements of action from the closed session. There were no actions taken. Uh, just a quick clarification. Closed session adjourned at a mayor at 6.35 p.m. and direction was provided to staff. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Tonight we have no presentations. And the only thing that I would like to, um, I have a couple of things that I'm gonna mention at this time, just because if anybody, the public is here, I wanna do it in the beginning. Um, since at the end, people tend to leave. Um, this month we have lost a community member, Steve um, Giardina, uh, the owner of Golden Air has passed away and the city would like to send the, their condolences and sympathy to the family. Um, he's going to be very missed. Um, also, uh, I need a moment after that, sorry. Um, also, I just wanna remind people that we are doing a green waste um, drop-off day at Pioneer Park on April 24th, and which is a Saturday from nine to two and on Sunday from nine to two, April 25th. This is the time to start cleaning up all that dry, dead stuff. Um, get your weeds, bring them over. It's gonna be a tough fire season, people, and we need to do everything we can to keep our town safe. So I hope that you will participate. Dwayne? Can we clarify too that it is free, there's no charge, and that it is also e-waste and appliances from what I've seen on the flyers, not just green waste. That is true, I'm sorry. And e-waste and um, is all on Saturday. So refrigerators, beds, anything like that, that is all done on Saturday. It's along with green waste. And then on Sunday, it's green waste only. Thank you. And also if anybody out there would like to volunteer, please contact me. Um, I still have a couple of openings. So thank you. Okay. Um, I am now going to move on to public comment. 
This is the time the public can comment on things that are not on the agenda. So if you have anything that you would like the council to hear, now's the time. I'm gonna ask you to please um, keep your comments to three minutes and to let you know the council cannot respond to you um, during this time, but we do hear you. So um, are we ready for public comment? If anyone would like to do public comment, please press um, raise your hand at the bottom of the screen. Nope, no public comment. Okay, well, thank you very much. Okay. Madam Mayor, Madam Mayor. Yes. If I could just interject. We did have one email public comment from Pastor Paul. Um, and the comment is nearly every day I notice a tourist upset because they get so much exercise walking up the hill to the commercial street parking lot to find the needed public restroom locked without a sign saying that the restrooms are locked or where there is another restroom available. Um, he goes on to say that he's uh, he these are mostly tourists and he rarely sees those same tourists back again. And this is from Paul Carner. I, I just wanted to let you know that staff will follow up on that and report back to you. Thank uh, you. Quick comment on that too. Um, I'll bring that back up to Jesse, but that was also part of the new signage project that um, Jesse Locks brought back up that I'm working on that Bubba has been working on. Um, restroom signs are included within that and we've never had that before, so. Thank you, Dwayne. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the consent agenda. Tonight we have six items on the consent agenda. Um, I'm going to read off what's on the agenda then I will ask if anybody wants to pull anything. Um, number one is account payable. Number two is action minutes from March 25th special city council meeting. Three is a resolution for approval of the regional transportation um, fee program. Four is a resolution amending appointed board director and alternate board director to the public agency, agency risk sharing authority of California, P-A-R-S PARSAC and Northern California city self-insurance fund. Um, five is award a contract of ch change of order for Niven Street sewer improvement. And six, request to approve a proclamation declaring April earthquake preparedness month. Is there anybody on council who would like to pull any of these items? No. Okay. Um, is there anybody from the public that would like to pull any of these items? No. Okay. Um, at this time, can I get on a mo motion? So Daniela? Moved. I move to approve the consent agenda items. Can I get a second? Gary? I'll second that. Great. Thank you. Um, all in favor, roll call, please. Sorry. Council Member Peterson. Yes. Council Member Fernandez? Yes. Council Member Fleming? Yes. Vice Mayor Strasser? Yes. Mayor Minette? Yes. Okay. Now we're moving on to um, public hearing. And this is the um, first reading of the ordinance 2021, an ordinance of the city of Nevada City to repeal and reenact chapter 12.02 of Nevada City Municipal Code pertaining to the encroachment per permit on public right-of-ways. Good evening, uh, this is Brian. Um, so we've, we've presented this ordinance before and then we had some comments from PG&E um, the comments were um, pretty minor, but it was it was just related to uh, their responsibilities that they already have with the PUC and making sure that um, nothing in the ordinance conflicts with that. So we made the changes, and um, 
I'm happy to answer any questions about the ordinance itself. But th there's one one request on the um, on the recommended action. It's this is a new chapter, so it's uh, we just need to reword that the action recommended action instead of saying repeal and reenact, we want to say add chapter 12.02. So just substitute the word add because we're adding a chapter to the code. Oh, okay. So it was a, it was just a typo. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions from council? Just a, a brief comment. I, uh, I did go through it again and uh, had some great input and work with Brian on, on the developing of this. So it's, it's uh, we're a much better place than we were. Thank you for your uh, work on this, Brian. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Okay, any, um, okay, I'm gonna open it up to the public. No public comment. Okay, thank you, Don. Okay, at this time, I will um, take a motion unless. Mad Madam Mayor, if you could just officially close the public hearing. Oh, I'm so sorry. So I'm a closing the public hearing. And now, can I get a motion? Ooh. <laughs> can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Hold on. I think we have to reword it. Um, oh. Right. So let, let me let me just go and say. Oh, uh, so thank you. You're right. To approve first reading of ordinance 2021 next in order and ordinance of the city of Nevada City to add chapter 12.02 of the Nevada City Municipal Code pertaining to encroachment permits on public right of way. Great. Can I get a second? I second that. Roll call, please. Councilmember Peterson? Yes. Councilmember Fernandez? Yes. Councilmember Fleming? Yes. And Vice Mayor Strasser? Yes. And Mayor Minette? Yes. Thank you. Okay, now we're moving on to business. Tonight, an appointment of Amy, Amy Cobbin to the Planning Commission. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Yes, I am very happy to recommend uh, Council Member Fernandez's appointment of Amy Cobden um, on the commission, and she is here. Um, I don't know if she has a few things to say, but um, but that's 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 all I got. <laughs> okay. Um, Hi everyone. I didn't Hi. Have any statements. Just wanted to drop in and say hello and thank you. Looking forward to it. Great. Thank you, and thank you for um, stepping up. Okay. At this time. Is there any other comments from council? Um, happy. Yeah, great great to have you on board, Amy. It's gonna be a blast. <laughs> Is that a promise? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, do we have any comments from the public? No comments. Thank you, Don. So at this time, I would like a motion to appoint Amy Cobham to the Planning Commission. I got this one. Um, I move that we appoint Amy Cobden to the Planning Commission. Can I get a second? I'll second that. Great, thank you, um, Gary. And roll call, please. Councilmember Peterson? Yes. Councilmember Fernandez? Yes. Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Vice Mayor Strasser? Definitely. Mayor Minette. Yes. Yay. <laughs> Welcome, Amy. Thank you, Amy. Thanks, guys. Okay. Moving on to the um, introduction of an ordinance of Nevada City granting a one-time, one-year extension to the term of the annual cannabis business permit originally issued between November 1st, 2019 and March 4th, 2020. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, um, at the March 25th, 2021 uh, meeting, special city council meeting, council directed staff to return to council with an ordinance to grant a one-time reprieve from the first year renewal requirement and, and process a second year renewal for those permits that had expiration dates before March 5th, 2020. 
Um, and this was just in response to some businesses we realized had lapsed in their renewal, um, but were still operating and wishing to continue to operate. So all this does is give them essentially a two year permit for their very first um, couple of years. It doesn't have any bearing on any future applications or permits um, for, for them or for anybody else. So um, it doesn't get codified. It just uh, gives these, it's, it's five businesses, um, a, a one-time reprieve, basically a, two, a two-year permit window. They are all now up for renewal. Great, thank you. Um, is there any questions um, from council for Amy? Um, do we have any comments from the public? Uh, no we did get, sorry, I did send around an email from uh, Diana Gamson, um, uh, who is expressing her support for, for the ordinance. I got it. Yeah. Okay. Any, um, Don, anybody else? No, no comments. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm going to bring it back to council. Anything else? Okay. Um, can I get a motion to introduce the ordinance for the first reading by title only? Um, I move that we introduce the ordinance to the city of Nevada granting a one-time one-year extension to the term of annual cannabis business permits originally issued between November 1, 2019, March 4th, 2020. I, what do I say next in order? Uh, <laughs> That's what, that's my movement or something. Okay. Can I get a second, please? Daniela? Oh. Sure, I'll second that. Great, thank you. <laughs> Can I, I get a roll call, please? Councilmember Peterson? Yes. Councilmember Fernandez? Yes. Councilmember Fleming? Of course. Vice Mayor Strasser? Yes. And Mayor Minette? Yes. yes. Thank you all. Okay, um, moving on to discussion on a proposed commercial street beautification project. So I'm gonna, um, Joan, can you give us- Yes, enough? thank you. So this item is on the agenda after some significant discussion with the mayor um, and with some uh, community members and staff. It's my understanding that when the COVID uh, emergency orders and, and so on were put in place over a year, almost a year ago now, that the uh, council gave direction to the city manager to proceed as um, was deemed appropriate without having to come back to the council for approval on a variety of things. So a lot is, has transpired during that time. Um, we've had some, some questions about how long are we going to continue to have street dining and uh, road closures and all that type of thing. So that was one reason why we wanted to put this on the agenda, just to touch base back and kind of give a little bit of an update. And then we have, a, a, have had a, a pro proposed project on Commercial Street. As you know, there have been planters placed on either end of, of Commercial Street for that approximate block length to prevent traffic down that street as we have outdoor dining occurring on the on the street and on the sidewalks. The idea was to place, was to take those planters down, they're not perceived as being very attractive, and to place uh, newer, better, better looking planters, smaller in size, on, on the street. Um, the length of the street between where those two existing planners are, as well as to put some benches and uh, some other other beautification types of, of of things. There there were a little there were some communication missteps in that process, and uh, we had some extensive discussion between the the mayor and I as that was happening. And uh, as a result, we did have a meeting this morning, which. Mayor Minette and Council Member Fleming uh, participated in with uh, members from the chamber as well as those who are proponents of this of this project. Um, the result of that meeting was uh, that the city will the city staff will take a very serious look at those two planters to determine if we can do something different with them to 
make certain that um, that they are meeting safety standards in, in terms of emergency vehicles being able to egress and or ingress and egress from them. Uh, right, I should have said also that we had uh, input from Sam Goodspeed, um, uh, Paul Rohde from the police department, Bubba Highsmith from the public works department and Brian McAllister has also been involved in those discussions. So we've looked at all those things and so we we committed to relook at that, um, make some determinations on what we might be able to do to change the dynamics of those and authorize the placement of these new planters along the sides of the street, not down the middle of the street, which was the original concept that, that we thought uh, they were wanting to proceed with. So they will be moving forward to put these new planters and benches along the sides of the streets, not necessarily in a linear fashion, but in vignettes and, and so on, um, and plant have them planted nicely and, and so forth. And then I think the, the key component coming out of that for me is since I've been here, it seems to me that there has been a lack of consistency in, a, in following policies, procedures that we may have, and uh, so on. So uh, what what I think has to happen, and I'm, I'm looking for your, your confirmation of this, I suppose, this evening, is to put in place a, a, a process and to have good communication on all sides, to really establish a strong uh, partnership between the city and those people who want to volunteer in the city and do good works. Um, and certainly we have a lot of good works that have been done by the volunteers in this community, uh, but have a, a defined process that everybody follows that gives the city sufficient time to review plans from a liability standpoint, reduce the risk to the city as well as to the volunteers and to be able to move forward in a partnership that results in projects that, that continue to benefit the city and, and beautify it. Um, I, I believe that you would be in support of that, but I want to confirm that. Um, and assuming that you are, and we'll know that in just a moment, I would be bringing back to you in the future uh, a report on how we would be, pro what the process would be, how we would be implementing it, and um, how, how we would move forward with that. I believe that the, the meeting this morning was productive. I think everybody went away agreeing that these are things that we need to do to uh, open better lines of communication and have a more productive relationship between the city and, and community members that want to do good works. I'd be happy to answer questions that you might have. Yeah, I, I have no questions. I don't know if we're going to go through each person, but uh, yeah, it's, it's an, an obviously needed step forward um, in kind of how we do business. So yes, I agree with that. Yeah, the loosey goosey sort of, you know, so and so said I could, you know, worked for a while, but certainly doesn't work. And while we have this wonderful opportunity of having Joan here who understands policies and procedures and how to implement them and create them, we should do that for everything we can without getting overly bureaucratic. Yeah, that was that was just my thing is like I, I, I'm, I'm all for policy. I'm all for tightening things up for sure. I think it sets a dangerous precedent when we don't we're, we've been living the dangerous precedent, I think. Um, and so but but as long as it doesn't become this bureaucratic sort of like hoopla that people have to go through um, to be able to support. Um, and, and contribute and beautify Nevada, Nevada City. And a question, Joan, uh, just for clarity, did you uh, land in a place about the, 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 the two barricaded planters? No, that's, what this, what, that's going to go back to the staff and we're going to evaluate it from um, a couple of different perspectives. Certainly uh, safety, um, access and beauty. Um, that's that was one of the main things that there was concern about safety for sure. Um, absolutely, always safety first. And um, 
aesthetics, I think, are are are, are certainly. I've, I've I think I've heard the most about uh, our our current downtown aesthetics. So whatever we can do to make it look good, I'm, I'm you know I'm what the group of volunteers created and did for us is just is just beautiful. So if we can continue to embrace that um, and move in that direction, um, I'm a fan of that aesthetic for sure. Okay. Um, yeah, I got three things. One is um, volunteers are so important to a city, um, so critical to what we do, especially a city that's, you know, we're not going to ever have all the funding to do the things we need and, and our volunteers are good. Um, I am, am, have, and always will be an advocate for a structured volunteer management program. Um, so we keep track of our volunteers, we acknowledge them, uh, reward them appropriately, um, work it with staff. Um, a lot of people have done this. Um, so I think that's a really important piece of this so that we can manage a really valuable resource. Um, the the uh, second piece of the aesthetics, um, I heard someone day, today say that they thought the downtown was looking better, but I had to say when when I campaigned and everything else was, how everybody was holding Grass Valley up as the model. And, you know, when I, when I watched what happened, whoever had responsibility for it, there wasn't a lot of design standards or aesthetics in there to produce something that was desirable. Um, and it sort of became a hodgepodge thing. So I think that piece of it is really important. And the other piece too, and I just want to flag this because we're, we bumped into it here. We're going to bump into it a lot. We just made some major, major changes in the city. And we are, we are working on culture. We're working on all those things. Not everything moves forward at the same time. So folks, uh, you know, we'll be moving forward with our thinking, but folks will be behaving in the past. There's all this transition period which, no. with which we will work through. Yeah. But these, we just have yeah. to pay attention to these things as we go. So that's, that's what I got. It's the mayor. Uh, internet went out in the chamber. Uh, and before we wrap up, I have another comment, but I don't think everybody's spoken yet. If I could just jump in for a moment, one thing that I did neglect to, to mention and, and your comments uh, re have reminded me, one of the other things that the staff will be doing in addition to looking at those barricades is looking at the permits that were issued for the out di outdoor dining areas as part of this whole process and um, visiting them and reminding them if they are outside of the boundaries of what their permit allowed to bring them back into, into conformance. So we will also be doing that as we move forward. And in conjunction with all of that, I have tentatively on the agenda, the first meeting in May, discussion on um, how, how we're going to continue to proceed if it still looks like June 15th is going to be the reopening date in the state, which all ties back to this discussion. Can I make a comment on, I would like to almost, you know, this is a place to acknowledge our businesses that have been doing a good job and um, maybe look at reissuing outside permits just through the summer, why they, continue to um, build their businesses back up, but that's... Uh -oh. oh no. Is the whole building losing internet? Max headroom. <laughs> that's funny. Dating yourself there, Dwayne. You really are. I was gonna say, that must be a generational thing, right? Yeah, it totally is. You wouldn't know about it. <laughs> they're, they're, they're back. You need to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> Our internet is unstable here, yeah. you guys. Sorry. Okay, I think it is one that we just want to ask him. So, could you hear me at all? What I said? Uh, just a, you acknowledged the, the 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 businesses that are doing good, and then you kind of froze. Well, the continued oh. possibility of outdoor Well, I would dining. like us to revisit who can keep outside dining is basically. And who can't maybe through the, you know, the end of August, just to give them a chance to rebuild. It's, it's worth investigating for sure. My question is, and, and, and this is real, who is going to go to these restaurants and tell them that they have to move their tent, like Sushi the Raw, 
And who is going to enforce that? I mean, nobody's done that this whole time. It, it, you know, we're going to say, okay, let's go to every business and make sure they're in compliance with the regulations as they were or as the new ones we make them, you know. And for people who are not in compliance, like Friar Tux, they shouldn't have any structure in their parking place at all. And so are we, and, and I know June 15th is coming up and things could change, but, you know, we made these policies that we were going to try to enforce some of these regulations and clean up downtown and have some uniformity and not let people do whatever they want. And we've said this over and over again. And now we're saying it again. Let's go around and talk to these people. Who's going to do that? What are they going to say? And what are the repercussions if they don't apply? You know, oh. apply. So, Council, just a reminder, uh, as Joan indicated, she is agendizing this for your full discussion, and it is not an agendized item for tonight. So, just, just that's just my job. Sorry. Right. Sorry, I didn't realize. I was going off anyway. <laughs> really? I was really? No. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dean, for getting us back on track. Okay. Um, is there anything else that we need to do on this? No. Well, I, I still have a, I'd like a comment here. Oh, I'm sorry, Dwayne. Okay, since it says that we, it says it's agendized that we can discuss and provide direction on proceeding with the project. Um, this is kind of directed towards Brian. Um, Joan doesn't know about this. One of the things that I found kind of curious um, is a very small vocal minority here in town, and you guys know who I'm talking about. In my opinion, they used the commercial street project and then kind of COVID coincidentally came in as an opportunistic time in a very sneaky way, in my opinion, to get rid of the boardwalk and the parklet. We had agreed every council up until about a year and a half ago that when the commercial street project happened, the boardwalk was only coming out because of its build, its structure, its design. Um, when Chris was still there as public works director, because he said that we couldn't clean under it with the wood. We couldn't, uh, it wasn't satisfactory, it wasn't sanitary, and Bill agreed. So we had talked about when and if we did commercial street, it would be redesigned in a way that it was part of the street, concrete base so that nothing could go under it. And I'm bringing this up now because I'm seeing nationwide, worldwide, what we're seeing is because of COVID, restaurants everywhere are actually adding outdoor seating because of how this has worked out. Fast food restaurants, I think I brought this up at the last meeting, the report that I saw in the New York Times and then LA, um, they actually said that fast food places, McDonald's are cutting their place structures in half and they're putting outdoor seating in full-time permanent long-term because it's a new thing. And we actually even had a drawing with a parklet that would have gone outside of the front of the Alpha building long term that would mimic mirror image the one on Commercial Street. Um, and if we don't, if we let this kind of get pushed away, which we did when we had this discussion on this project, um, we'll never see the second one, the third one. We'll never develop seating in Callanan Park like we talked about. Um, and so I just want to readdress that because. Up until the town hall meeting, we had had full support to keep the boardwalk part look in a different fashion, designed differently, but it would look the same. It would still fit in. It still worked with the one-way direction that we agreed on Commercial Street. It gave those merchants a place for their um, you know, customers to go out and drink their coffee, have a piece of sushi, whatever they wanted to do. Um, so I'm afraid we're going to lose something that now, in retrospect, is something that will work out even better long-term in the future with the way society is going. So I, I just wanna throw that out there. I kind of feel like it, it suddenly got thrown away and pushed away in that discussion and that kind of, uh, you know, when we were talking with that, the historical society, um, it just kind of got thrown out and we never really talked about that or voted on it. Um, so yeah. I, I'm just kind of confused. Okay, I, I can just um, respond with my understanding of it. We, there was no formal approval to, uh, to remove the boardwalk, it was it was done because it was it was starting to fall apart and it would have had to be rebuilt. Mm -hmm. But it was also in the way of some underground utility work that we needed to do. Yeah. So we we removed it, um, and then at the same time got council approval to do the ut utility work, and um, and then COVID hit, you know, and um, so. You know, we we didn't intend to put it back because, like you said, we we're going to do wider sidewalks instead of a boardwalk because it 
of the maintenance problem. The boardwalk was, um, you know, only lasts so long when you're watering plants and the wood starts to rot and so forth. Mm -hmm. But um, a few designs were presented. One, one had a, a meandering um, drive aisle with, with two parklets on either side. And then um, the Historical Society and, and others didn't want that, you know? So um, the design that we landed on is just uh, equal width sidewalk on both sides. It's wider, wider than it exists, but it doesn't have the seating like you're mentioning. Um, yeah. So Wait, we, do we want to bring the, are you asking never to bring this back? back? Yes. Yeah. So the issue here is what happened was we up until you guys weren't on the council yet, but the previous councils, we had been told that the old boardwalk would be removed for the construction for reasons of maintenance. We very clearly um, discussed having a new version of it put back in. And then what happened with Historical Society and some of these other, the vocal minority group, is not only did we lose the boardwalk, but then we actually compromised and lost the wide sidewalks we wanted. We, we cut it back to a little bit wider than what we have now. So just kind of very quietly, things went away and then we compromised and we compromised more. So we're losing almost everything and only gaining an extra foot or so. I think it needs to come back because that was something mm -hmm. we had agreed on rebuilding and I could see maybe if the sidewalks had gone as wide as you originally presented and Rebecca's plan originally presented, but we compromised and trimmed that down. Mm -hmm. And now with the new way the world is moving forward, everybody is moving towards outdoor seating long-term. And now we're talking right now about removing the tents, which you know I agree in front of everybody. We're gonna go backwards 10 years in my opinion, not forward when everybody else yeah. is going forward. No, we're not, we're not going to. Yeah. We've, we've got okay. time to. We've got some time so, to do it right because we're not going to do the construction until after the holidays. Okay. And that's so, yeah, to, so bring it back, please. Okay. And sure. also, Dwayne, I don't think it's a good idea for us to remove outside seating for a while. We need to let these residents recover. Oh, no, I agree. I'm just saying that it's going to go away eventually, and then we're going to go right. backwards before we had the boardwalk when other communities are adding outdoor opportunities and seating. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But again, it just kind of very weird in a weird way. It just disappeared through all this process. Yeah. And previous councils that I was a part of, we had agreed that if it went away, it would be rebuilt. Um, and we had checked with every merchant. We talked to the landlords and we had a very tiny sliver of people that didn't like the boardwalk. Uh, the problem we had with it was law enforcement, if anything, um, not the boardwalk itself. People did enjoy that. And it's something we at least need to discuss as a new council. Is that something that we do want to maintain and or to add? And if not, that's fine. But I just, I felt weird about the way it disappeared. Okay. Yeah, we can come well, back. With and things have changed since COVID. Lifestyles have changed. So we may need to relook at this. Yeah. And, and like I said, 15 years ago, we had a second one planned actually out in front of the Alpha building as we started doing things on Broad Street, uh, where the loading zone was, and it would have fit in perfectly mirror image. And we see how people are enjoying that atmosphere now. Um, so it's just a thought. I would just hate to cut us off uh, without at least discussing it as a group. That's good. Thank you, Dwayne. Thanks. Okay. And so Fox done. That's okay. Um, let me see. Uh, so um, do I need a motion for council to authorize it? Are we asking you to, okay, no fine. Okay, um, then I'm gonna move on to 11, which is discussion on resuming enforcement of parking standards and parking permits. So this is an item uh, in the short time I've been here that I've heard quite a bit about. Um, there seems to be a strong desire to re-implement the enforcement of our uh, parking meters and issuance <clears throat> of parking passes. So um, in, in looking at the, the background on this, I, I found that on June 1st last year, the council adopted resolution 2020-36 that suspended collection of parking meter fees. And um, that was a direct result of, the, of trying to address economic impacts that the COVID pandemic was having on our businesses. 
and it was not specifically addressed in that resolution, uh, but that at the same time, the sale of parking permits also ceased. On June 23rd of 2020, the item was brought back before the council at council direction and resolution 55 was approved that repealed that previous resolution from the month before and reinstated the normal collection of parking meter fees. Again, there was not specific direction on the issuance of parking permits. However, that never happened. The, I'm told that there was a, a, an, an informal two week waiting period to implement the, implement the reinstatement of the collection of the fees. It's not clear to me if that direction came from council or if that was an, an administrative uh, action. But during that two week period, the colored tier system that the state implemented went into effect. And from that point on, the, the resolution was not enforced with the understanding that the police department would instead enforce um, or focus its enforcement on, on COVID violations. Um, and as you've made clear, that hasn't been a consistent practice either. So um, as I indicated during my time here, there's been a lot of comment about reinstating those fees. And I think it's time that we do that. I don't have tonight the, the exact number uh, in, in terms of revenue loss to the city in this, in this ensuing time. We'll have that as we get more into the budget process, but certainly there has been a loss of revenue in that period of time. So what I would like to do based upon that history and the, and the knowledge is to um, adopt a new ordinance, which effectively reaffirms what you did in July of last year, that we reinstate the collection of parking meter fees and begin selling parking permits again, and to make that effective on May 1st. And I chose that date to give sufficient time to notify the public that the assuming that you adopt the resolution that the collection is going to begin again, that gives time for a release of a, of a press release and to get it posted on the website and have sufficient time for the public to become aware that this is going to start again. So with that uh, background, I would take any questions that you may have. No, I, I the only thing I would throw out there is that we did have um, previous to you coming on board we had several meetings over even a year before COVID on how a new uh, parking pass program would be implemented. We came up with the, I think the police department hopefully has that documentation. We talked about discounting it enough for local merchants and their employees to actually receive a benefit to discourage them from parking in front of the merchants in prime spots um, so that they could have a pass but only worked on side streets, that type of thing. Um, so yeah, I'll keep it simple. Um, we'll, we'll pass this or whatever, we'll vote on it. But I want to make sure that you know that we had done a lot of work towards a new permit program that would really benefit the merchants and more so their staff members and employees and discourage them from taking the prime spots on Broad Street and Commercial Street. So that should be considered when we look at the pass, uh, the permit um, pass program as we move forward. Thank you for that. And we did put that into effect. So I'm it should be all, it should be there, okay. Dwayne. I hope so, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, Any? Um, are there any other questions from council? Okay, do we have any questions um, or comments from the public? No, no okay. comments from public. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, can I get a motion? Uh, motion to adopt resolution 2021 next in order, a resolution of the city of Nevada City reaffirming resolution 2020-55 that repealed the suspension of collection of parking meter fees at city parking meters and re-implementing the parking pass program effective May 1st, 2021. I will second that. Roll call. Council Member Peterson? Yes. Council Member Fernandez? Yes. Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Vice Mayor Strasser? Yes. Mayor Manette? Yes. Madam Mayor, if I, I just have a quick question. Um, I don't, I might have missed this, but back on item number 10, I just want to confirm I was monitoring, but Don, can you confirm that there was no public comment on the discussion of the proposed commercial street beautification project? I, I just, just can you confirm that? 
Um, yeah, we only have one attendee and I didn't see any raised hands, so. No, nor did I, just wanted to put her on the record. So thank you very much. Thank you. So thank thank you, I'm happened. sorry, my internet, I was running around trying to get back on, so I wasn't. You are, you are forgiven. <laughs> um, okay, um, this is the time for uh, city manager and council member reports. Um, I'm gonna start with council, Dwayne. Um, nope, we've, we've had several ERC related meetings. Um, they are actually doing a great job of updating uh, something I've talked about the city for many, many years. I, I felt like as a council member, we should go back through all 20,000 pages of ordinances from the 1940s forward and look at every item and get rid of things that are outdated, update, change, move, whatever. Uh, but ERC is doing that. I've been part of that process and actually it's been pretty uh, refreshing uh, to go in and start hacking things that have been just burdensome uh, as far as, uh, you know, governmental, I, I guess, uh, minutia. Um, and some of the other groups and committees I'm on are starting to do the same thing because they have time. And uh, with COVID, it's actually, it's kind of hit the reset button for a lot of people to rethink how we do business. Um, but nothing important in the meetings I've had. Uh, so I'll bring that up at the next meeting. Great. Gary. Um, so uh, Daniela and I uh, attended the council, uh, the uh, county COVID briefing last week while uh, folks were out of town. Um, very much, you know, the standard briefing. I think that one of the more interesting things that I took from that briefing was uh, on the funding that's coming from the feds. And the, so <clears throat> example, the $560,000, it doesn't come at once. It's a two, it's a one year, you get the first one and then the next payment comes within 12 months of that. So it could be split into a full year, which is something to consider as we go forward. Um, otherwise was an effort to explain the changes in the tiers of the, um, of the, uh, the rating for community safety. Um, the state changed them again, and I'm not gonna pretend to act like I understand it any better than I did before. <laughs> but it was, it was a helpful briefing. I didn't know, Danielle, if you wanted to add anything to it, that's all I've got. Yeah, um, you, you did a great job summing it up, Gary. Thank you. Um, Aaron, Mayor, if it's okay, I'll just launch into mine as well. Great. Um, Doug and I both attended the very first ever ad hoc committee on racial justice with supervisors Hall and Bullock, as well as uh, Jan Arbuckle from Grass Valley. Um, that was a really exciting meeting. Uh, we are just kind of digging in and establishing a foundation of who we are and what we wanna do. And we're excited to share more with you guys. Also, um, Nevada City, a uh, new participant in the Regional Housing Committee. I uh, joined that call today. Uh, that was great. Um, a lot of representatives from local organizations, um, as well as Mike Dent from the county and a few other folks. So I'm excited to um, get in there and see what that's about and see how I can help support um, housing efforts in the city. Thank you. Doug? Yeah, Daniela, that's great that you're involved with them. You know, I think that one of us should, you know, from the city should always be, uh, you know, monitoring what they're doing from a housing standpoint, because they're driving a lot of decisions. And, and, you know, what I was going to report about was, you know, we had this great meeting, Daniela and I, and the people she mentioned, and I, I would look forward to that continuing. But um, you know, on a professional level, I've been tasked by the, or Marley and I have been tasked by the county to do a lot of things, but one of them is a, a, a complete analysis of the American Rescue Plan and the American Jobs Plan to track all of the potential grant opportunities that are coming out of there. There are billions and billions of dollars. You know, they had a, you know, a, a little bit of a, the League of Cities did a, a webinar on on how the money's coming to the cities today. But as I'm doing this with the county and each department in the county, we're doing a top-down grant assessment of what grants they've done, their success ratios, things like that. And then we're gonna put everything to a centralized grant management database so that everybody knows what everybody's doing, projects, needs, all that. On some level, you know, we don't obviously have nearly the amount of grants that they do, but. I think that we have to be prepared to 
see what forecasted grants are coming out and match them with our needs for grant funding. Um, you know, I, I got a, uh, uh, an email from Marie before she left of some of the needs that she articulated that she thought we should look at for grant funding. Dwayne, I know you, you know a lot. All of us know some too, but I think if we have a systematic effort uh, throughout City Hall to look at all the grants we get, the grants we need, the grants we've lost, the grants we should be getting, and the grants that are coming down the pike, we will have an opportunity to get a significant amount of grant funding into the city. And Joan and I, I I've talked to Joan about this a little bit, and I, I hope we can meet about that and, and come up with a process that's a lot more streamlined than what we're doing for the county uh, that would help us do that. So that's just what I have to say. So thank you. Great, thank you. Um, so I don't have a lot to report. I'm during COVID. I have um, become a mayor, uh, a member of the Mayor's Coalition, which is now we're up to um, 75 mayors in California that gather every other week to talk about what's going on in their communities and also with the state and how we can work together um, <clears throat> to move th things through. Um, I'm finding it interesting because it's a lot of little, little cities, not quite as little as ours, but little cities. And um, there's a lot of good information out there. And one of the things they were talking about the grants that are coming available. So that was one of the issues this next week. Um, so yeah, we need to keep our eyes open. And because a lot of times, um, when you have a city that is under 50,000 people, we miss out on a lot. And um, sometimes we have to put out the extra effort to make sure that we get our fair share. So um, the Mayor's Coalition has actually been very insightful for me. And I think it's gonna continue even past the time that I am mayor. So Dwayne, you'll get to move in on that one. So, Mayor, I, um, I, would, I would ask you, Mayor, if you, I'm sorry to interject, but anytime you see a grant opportunity that might even potentially be, you know, viable, send it to me and I'll, you know, assess it, you know, top to bottom and, you know, just I, anybody who- I will that. do that. I'm hearing a lot, especially there, one of the conversation was that there's a number of things that are just about to come out. So I'm keeping my eyes and ears open, okay? Thank you. Um, okay, so I'm gonna move on to our city manager report. Okay, I'll give you a, a brief COVID update. We're still in the red tier, as I'm sure you all know. Um, this week, two cases of the COVID variant that first was detected in the UK have been confirmed in Nevada County, one on the west side, one on the east side. And last week there was uh, one case of a different variant. Um, I'm not sure where that one originated from, but it's been confirmed. Um, the county has now opened vaccines to those 16 years and older. And uh, the information on, on scheduling appointments is on the county's website. Uh, so far, there's been more than 46,000 doses of the vaccine administered here in Nevada County, which is great. And we have 83 active cases now with five active hospitalizations. So hopefully we continue to move in the right direction and um, can ultimately get down into one of those lower tiers. I wanted to give you an update on the Cash and Spield project. Um, you, I think you're all aware that that's an affordable housing project. It's a 51 unit project on Ridge Road. It encompasses 11 one-bedroom units, two, uh, excuse me, 26 two-bedroom units and 14 three-bedroom units, with the focus being on affordability and families. The city had, um, I always forget the, what this acronym is, it's the PLHA funds, $200,000 in those, which we've placed into the trust fund that is being administered by the county, and you, you've been aware of, of that. Um, those funds are in the Western Nevada County Regional Housing Trust Fund account, um, with the county being the fiscal and administrative lead on that. On, in mid-February, an RFP was released for uh, project proposals for consideration for funding through that fund. And um, 
The criteria was that the be a fully entitled project with a high community benefit, that the project be sho shovel ready, that it be in Western Nevada County and could demonstrate a high probability of su successful completion. The responses were scored then by the regional housing um, uh, group and, rep from, and representatives from all three agencies, which are uh, Nevada City, Grass Valley and the county, reviewed the uh, applications. Our representative was Amy Wolfson and the Cashins project was selected and they were awarded today, or excuse me, on Tuesday, um, by the board approval of a loan of uh, $1,575,000 for that project. It's the first loan that's been issued by, through that trust fund. So that's, wow. that's exciting news. The loan is a 55 year loan at 3% <laughs> interest. Um, it's secured to the property. The, the complete financing package is scheduled to close on May the 7th. So that's right around the corner. And construction is, um, Anticipated to begin by July 1st of this year, but uh, I was in a, a, a Zoom meeting today on, on all of this, and it looks like they may be able to start turning dirt in June um, with an estimated completion in the summer of 2022. So that's really exciting. This is an exciting project, I think, for the community and uh, something that's definitely needed. With all that having been said, one of the things that we talked about today in this meeting was with COVID going on, it's restricted the types of groundbreaking ceremonies that might otherwise have occurred. However, there is some opportunity if we wanted to do a groundbreaking ceremony to do that within the constrictions that we, that we have. So I'd like to find out if there's a consensus that you would like to do a ceremony or not. And uh, if so, I, I told them I would report back and the, the county, um, press people will work with me to put that together. So I see yes. all heads nodding, it looks like. So absolutely, we'll proceed with that. So yeah. I just wanted to an update on that because I think it's an exciting, exciting thing. And I think the community should be aware of that as well. I think it's great to do things right now that are positive and community oriented. And so thank you all for that. Okay. Is there anything else at the moment? Last chance, guys. No. About a parade for the national. <laughs> oh, I that know. Sign up for <laughs> yeah, so. I hope it's not. They're, they'll get their sign. But we, I mean, Gary brought this up. <laughs> we have to capitalize on the opening of the national and the opening and all the people that are coming here. So we have to think about some kind of celebration <laughs> that we could do COVID safe or COVID, yes. post COVID, whatever. I heard that the so I also would like to thank um, uh, the council members who came out and helped me paint curbs last week. I really appreciated it. Um, also, just to let people know that uh, Jesse Locke is still running the Nevada City cleanup on Tuesdays and Thursdays um, at 8 a.m. in the morning. Um, you meet at Commercial Street. I'm sorry, 7:30. Hey, can um, I go back? Can I just show up? Can I just show up? Again? Yep. Yes, you can. Right, I'll go back. She will love seeing you. Um, there's still a lot to be done. And I also just want to put a thank you out to all the people who have been volunteering in Nevada City. We have some amazing residents here who really put their heart and soul into keeping our town beautiful and working to make it reopen beautifully so thank you all i really appreciate everything you do thank you thank you thank you on that note i am going to call for adjournment good night everyone everybody in favor say goodbye Bye. 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 <laughs> oh, so quick uh, thanks everyone see you soon good night get out of here good night good night